Now, the flow of, of refugees to Europe is an example of multiple displacement or onward movement, however you want to term it. What's, what's the role of, of development aid and humanitarian aid organizations here in helping to prevent this multiple displacement? Um, and what are you pushing for in terms of integrated programming? Uh, we, we mentioned before the work of, of ECHO, fellow Across Borders partners, and um, EuropeAid as well here at the European Commission. Um, it's all about uh, policy coherence, isn't it, here? That's, that's what's at, at stake. It is really. It's about policy coherence, but it's all ab also about you know, getting uh, the approach right. I mean, one of the things that World Vision as a child-focused organisation has been very involved with is pushing for protection to be put at the heart of humanitarian action. And this is particularly important where children are concerned. They're often extremely vulnerable and the risks for children in situations of conflict, emergency, you know, humanitarian crisis are much greater than for um, for others. So we really have, uh, we've engaged recently with DG Echo, which was involved in revising its protection guidelines, and we pushed very strongly for child protection to be a strong focus, and we're successful in, in, in achieving that. So we really are very advocating very strongly and, um, you know, working with the European institutions to try to ensure that, you know, the right priorities are uh, adopted in terms of the overall humanitarian approach, so protection being one of them. But I think our key messages, particularly for the World Humanitarian Summit, are around reforming our financing systems. It's about being more accountable to affected populations and also involving them more, involving affected populations more in humanitarian responses. We believe that uh, local populations have a very important role to play in responding to some of the humanitarian crises. Um, and also, uh, we really believe that more transparency, more effective monitoring and so on, we're looking for key indicators to be agreed uh, at the World Humanitarian Summit that can actually help us to be clearer about what the impacts of our humanitarian efforts are. So, you know, we are open to innovating. We see these as the key issues uh, confronting the, the humanitarian community at the moment, and we're prepared to work with other actors to try to adopt new uh, innovative and effective approaches. Now, we've heard a lot about uh, the redefinition of official development assistance in recent weeks. Um, you know, how will the EU ensure that ODA um, isn't spent on what could be termed um, internal EU issues, for example, border controls, um, migrant registration facilities and the like. What, what's being done, what's your perspective here in Brussels on um, ensuring that ODA allocations remain in line with their stated aim of, of uh, eradicating poverty within developing countries? Yeah. That is a very live issue um, in uh, the EU at the moment, but particularly in Brussels, where you know, the redefinition of ODA or the use of ODA for other purposes, particularly security purposes, is becoming a matter of concern for the humanitarian development community. I have to be honest and say that at this moment in time, it is a very, uh, it's a, a big challenge to try to um, get a positive response from the member states all, like, all organisations like World Vision can do at this point in time is to keep our advocacy, you know, to, to join with others, very strong advocacy, um, and also try to appeal to the public. Because I think what we will see if this trend continues, and there's n no guarantee that it won't, uh, despite our advocacy, I think what we will see is, you know, a shrinking of the amount of ODA that's available. And at the same time that we're saying we should be a addressing the root causes of many of these crises so that there won't be this massive displacement of people um, and, and, and Europe won't find itself in the position where we have growing numbers of, of refugees and migrants arriving on our doorstep. We have to address the root causes, but if the, the pool of money from which we are providing our ODA is shrinking, um, we won't be in a position to do that. So this is, this is the dilemma we face, but we're certainly doing our best to try to prevent that.